All right, we. this was from a, a presentation that you've already had, but I'm gonna go through it and sort of break it down into parts because this is the rough draft of the statement that I want you all to make at the very end of each lesson. The idea is that it's preparation for when you go to do TEKS. And they say, they observe your lesson and they say, oh, tell me about your differentiation. And in kind of a long sentence, I want you all to be able to go, oh, this is my differentiation, blah, 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 blah. And so there's, like I said, it's really a sentence, but it's sort of a run-on sentence. Because I know that some data, you've got some pre-assessment data, you've got the scores of kids because you've got benchmark scores, because you had ticket out the door the day before, something that tells you about how you're gonna group your kids, right? Because I know that, I have my kids based on readiness. And student factors, I'm not gonna put this kid with that kid, or I'm not gonna put, um, this kid is really fascinated with cars, and so I wanted them in that group. So you're gonna look at the individual kids too, just their characteristics and personalities and interests. So because I know this data, and I know my kids, I differentiated the following lesson by aligning, and this is where we're gonna start getting into the details. Okay? And it's elements by tools by providing management plan by differentiation. There's basically six places, six statements you're gonna make in that. The first one is the pre-assessment data. The second one is the, is the uh, student captures. You said this was Yeah, this okay. one is straight off the, ow. It's on D2L. It's, on D2L. Oh. it's been on D2L actually. Yeah, okay. So it's the differentiate, it's called differentiated instruction. Okay. I think this picks up with like slide three. So I'm not gonna focus a whole lot on these two because those are things you already have. When, when I talk about pre-assessment data, what kinds of information do y'all have? So in knowing their benchmark scores, their, I might know their um, sort of milestone scores. Sure. You might know their milestone scores, but you're gonna know their reading level. You're gonna know their benchmark scores. You're gonna know how they did on the last pretest. You're gonna know how they did on the unit test right beforehand. So you can say, however you choose to group them by readiness, but basically you look at all your kids. It's really, really helpful if you have your kids listed in Excel. Have you all discovered the power of Excel yet? Oh, I yes. love Excel. Excel is the bomb. Dr. Yeah, Dr. Hamill taught us a lot on Excel. Excellent. We're using it a lot in statistics right now. Page on yes. Statistics because you can sort and resort and resort. So you can sort all your kids by this one particular thing and then start doing your dividing lines. Here's your must could, your must group, your should could group, your should group, and your could group, right? So like dividing is almost in the quartiles. Very similar to here's your top quartile, here's your middle half, here's your bottom quartile. Whoa, <laughs> fancy language. I wasn't going to go there, but that's fancy language. Well, we just did it in statistics. We just there you did go. Ah, statistics. There you go. Yeah, no. All right. And student factors are things like personality. I mean, things you can't really nail down. But it's also, you've got a really active kid. You're not going to put them up front in this very small squish space. You're going to put them in the back. Um, you need a kid who needs to pay attention, so you, who, who can sit still, but tends to chat, you put them up front. So it's those kinds of student factors. Right. Okay, you all talked about the progression, student factors. So plus you also know what they must do, they should do, you know your standards. So then there's the student factors and it's things like interest, your IEPs, your 504s, you're gonna have to put those kind of into, into your planning as well. So you think about those kinds of demographics. If you notice that your top quartile are all white males, um, I'd suggest that you mix it up a bit because you need to create some variation as well. If you notice that your bottom quartile is all African-American males, mix it up. So you're gonna include culture, race, gender, age, those kinds of things just to make sure you've got a little bit of a, of a mix going on. And then there's reading levels, comprehension levels, frustration levels, social issues, and personality issues. You may have a kiddo who, who gets hundreds on tests, but turns nothing in, and so has 50s. I own one of those. You own one of those. <laughs> and so you probably should actually put that kid into the could group, despite the fact that they may have, you know, they may have terrible grades, because you know that kid can. So, you, you got one. Yeah, I have one of those. There you go. Story of our lives. All right. This is where it starts to get interesting. So these two factors, 
you kind of write down and you do ahead of time. These two factors, these three factors, are what you're going to do during the lesson itself. And so if you think about, I differentiated by, by planning, my instruction, and my assessment, right? Mm -hmm. Everything about curriculum is planning, instruction, and assessment. This is what do I have to teach and who do I have to teach it. This is how am I going to teach it. And then this is how I'm going to assess it. So it's broken into these chunks. And these three pieces are the, so how am I going to teach this? All right, this should look familiar. So the elements of instruction are, okay, so how am I going to teach it? I'm going to think about the beginning, the middle, and the end of a lesson. I'm going to think about what are the other parts of this that you're going to think about? The why, what, and the how. The why, what, and the how. Or the why, the why, the, yeah, the what, how are you going to show me? They also called it the presentation. I can't remember them. Um, but the three P's, with the last one being the product. Yeah. Process, the presentation, the presentation, the process, process and the product. And the, yeah. So I'm going to present it a certain way, I'm going to process, have kids process it a certain way, and then I'm going to ask a certain product of them. So each of those places are places you can differentiate. I know this about my kids, so now I'm going to think about the beginning, the middle, and an end of a lesson. Once I've done that, the beginning, middle, end, I can start to do some activities. Here's an activity I just happened to have pulled out as a, a way of processing. Because the more little hooks and grabs and strategies you've got, this one's kind of fun. You, you have kids take on a role, it's called RAF. They, they pick, take a role, they pick an audience, they pick a format, and they pick a topic. And then they can write or communicate or do activities based on that. So for example, these are sort of interdisciplinary, but you could be a fraction writing to a, you could be a decimal writing to a fraction in the form of a letter about their relationship. What is the relationship between decimals and fractions? Um, you could also, but what's kind of fun is where you've got various roles. You can have a decimal, a fraction, um, a whole number and something else related to some other audiences. What are there some different kinds of formats and then different topics and then they can pick what they want to. Your kids who lead power, your kids who are really behavior problems, really like this because they can figure out different strategies. Tell me at 15 minutes, okay? Okay. All right. Here's, the, here's for little kids. Here's a gingerbread brand writing, talking to our class in an oral format about why you really should not listen to other people. <laughs> Um, in that beginning, middle, and end, making sure that they make connections, making sure that there's literacy, making sure that there's other interdisciplinary connections somewhere in those parts, including technology. Um, not really going to go there. All right, so those are the elements of instruction are really that beginning, middle, and end, right? There's lots of things you can do in those beginning, middle, and ends, but, but planning out I differentiated this because I knew this about my, my, I have the data about this on my kids. I knew this about the personality of my kids. And I thought about the beginning and the middle and the end of the lesson. Now those are the places. The tools should look really familiar. All right, so I differentiated by, I, different, I did it because, I differentiated it in the place, the beginning, the middle, and I did it using any of these four tools. Now we really only talked about these first two. These bottom two you aren't as familiar with. You will be a little bit more after some of the activities online. Bloom's Taxonomy. So you can use Bloom's Taxonomy so, and some of you all saw that on the tic-tac-toe sheets, right? Mm -hmm. I use Bloom's Taxonomy to differentiate by having some low-level activities, some mid-level activities, and some higher-order thinking skills. Um, I required some kids that they had to do some higher order thinking skills, others were allowed to build up to it. So, <clears throat> so Bloom is a tool by which you can give choices in different levels of activities. So again, if you're still thinking about the tiering, <coughs> you've got, you might have low level, mid level, and higher order thinking skills. And if, you're, and if your principal ever says, no, I don't want you to limit these kids, 
the, the option is that what you say is, yes, but I asked these questions also. They were available to other two kids. Some kids, so I may say, Amy, this question's for you, and it's a higher order thinking question, because I know that that's where you're targeted. I differentiated my lesson because I'm aiming a higher order thinking question at you. Then I may open it up to anybody who wants it. Then I may follow up with a low-level question for Paige, because Paige is going, huh? And so I'll make sure I bring you in. So your principal says, how'd you differentiate? And you say, well, at the beginning of the lesson, I differentiate. I knew this about my kids, I knew their personality, and at the beginning of the lesson, I differentiated by asking middle-level questions, higher-order questions, and upper-level questions, as you can see by my questions here in my lesson plan. Do you see how that was a tool that you can use mm -hmm. in the beginning of the lesson? You can also use the progression of standards, sequencing of standards. What, what did I call those? What do, what do we call them in yours? Spirals or must, must should, should. goods. That's the progression of standards. I'm using the, the foundation standards to build upon. You can use them both at the same time. You can do one at a time. And so you can say, yes, I differentiated because in the middle of the lesson, I had activities for my low students to do that they must be able to do, and so we repeated the same concept tw three times. I had activities for my that they should be able to do that are based on the standards, and then I had activities that they could be able to do, all of which are based on grade level standards. We're just basing on the foundation of the standards, in the middle of the standard, and at the upper end of the standard, where the standard might be able to take you. So the idea is that the standards build up. These are tools. You can say, I used Bloom, and I used the progression of standards. Or you can say, oh, I used the sequence of standards, progression of standards. I'm calling it progression of standards. Your principal will have no idea what that means. Because we haven't trained a lot of principals yet in this program. But when your principal says, huh? You say, I taught at the bottom, of, I taught the base of the standard, I taught the middle of the standard, and I talked about where the standard could go. So you taught the full standard. I'm trying to protect y'all because I don't want y'all to be saying, well, I'm not teaching the standard. Yes, you are. You're teaching the standard that prepares them for the standard, right? Yeah, we talked about that? Mm -hmm. All right. You can also use blooms. And I saw some of y'all using this when you were looking for activities. Means they're new. Yeah. They're yes, I saw y'all using them. This is, an, is, a, is a fabulous one. One of my favorites is this one. Do you have this one? Have you seen this one? Okay. You can't read it on this slide because it's terrible. That's why she pulled up on mine. It okay. Was, it, was, it broke it down, it seemed like more. It's, yes. Yeah. And what this one does, if you say, okay, I'm going to differentiate it by Bloom's taxonomy. I'm going to take the standard and it's whatever the standard is. Students will be able to something. The standard itself is going to be at a certain level of Bloom's. So let's say the standard, it's, it's over here at application. And so students will be able to, I can't read all this. Um, here's the verbs. So they have all of these different verbs of what, what they can do. They may have it written here. Some kids are going to have to go a little bit backwards to build the foundational skills for that level of the standard. Some kids, you're going to have to move up the level of blooms, which is a lot of how they change the standards. When you, when you really look at the sequence of standards, a lot of times the verbs change by going up the blooms level. Did y'all catch on to that? Especially with math, you see that because you're doing the same thing oh, yeah. repeatedly. It's just how you're doing it differently. One level is identify, the next level is, is apply, solve problems, and then the next level is recognize create your own. Create right. your own. So they use blooms an awful lot to move up the standards. And that's what you can do. You can identify where the standard is written and then go backwards, go down or go up based off of that. What I love about this particular one, even though you can't read it on this slide, is that here are the verbs. Here are some products that kids can do. So that's that kids will process it and then they have to create a product, right? Well, what do I want kids to do? I mean, we're, we're, we can't test them all day long. And what we've learned is if we do these really rich products and then we give them a test, their test scores are higher. If we just give them a test, their test scores are lower. Mm -hmm. So you teach past the standard and then the test is below, it comes, bring, is a way to come back to it. Too many teachers are testing past the standard. So, 
1456. Let me finish two seconds and then we're done with this. Um, what's cool